Hello and welcome to The Transformation Project, a podcast and community for women who are looking to transform into the best version of themselves no matter where they are at. A place where you can listen, learn, and laugh along with us as we dive deep into different topics to help you live a happier, healthier, and more fulfilled life. Remember, we are all learning here together, and therefore the content and opinions of the hosts and our guests should not be taken as medical advice. Please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another episode. I am so excited for our guest speaker today. Antonetta and I go back, oh God, I don't even know how many years. We worked together, uh, let's do some quick math, eight, eight nine years ago? Probably. Maybe, yeah, probably. Um, and I don't know what it was but we just hit it off. You know what it was? She has the same birthday as Ben. And <laughs> the same birthday as my mom. And that's yes. what it was. <laughs> and we just hit it off. We worked in a gym together. We were in totally different departments. Um, but yeah, just always had a good laugh together and they stayed in touch after. And I don't think I was following you on Instagram. I think I was following you on Facebook or vice versa. And it was only like the last year that you popped up and you've been doing something totally different. And I have just been mesmerized with your story and what you've accomplished in these last little, last couple of years. And I've, yeah, I've just been creepily stalking you. <laughs> creepily because we were friends. So <laughs> it shouldn't have been so creepy, but then, yeah, I just did your, your mastermind. And so Anyways, can you, that's where I want to start. I want to start with that journey from working in a gym together to where you are now, why you got there and everything. And then we'll just go from there. Cause I love it. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. I'm really grateful to be here and amazing. I feel so lucky that we get to connect with people on literal opposite, opposite sides of the planet. It's incredible. So this is awesome. Um, but as for my journey, so yes, we started at the gym together that was great. Um, and then after I found out a short while later, I was pregnant and I just ended up moving through the ranks a little bit quicker at work to get to the position I wanted to get to, but did not see myself staying there once I had my son. It was a really time consuming job. So I'd say about 50 hours plus a week for, you know, regular regular pay. Let's say it was about it was below 40,000 a year and that's before tax. So with a little one coming, I just knew something had to change. I didn't like the hours. I, the environment was starting to change a lot. So I knew I wanted to bring a new version of myself to this new, you know, journey I was about to um, embark on myself. So I had my son and then decided uh, <laughs> that I was going to start in the eyelash extension industry, actually started there and um, built up a beautiful business there. And then from there, switched to educating in the industry, built up that business there, and then decided it's great, but it's not fulfilling. There's something missing. And um, then 2020 hit for all of us. And it was fun, we'll call it. And um, I decided to get into coaching. And it just, it seemed like the right progression of things because I had so many people reaching out to me for mentorship as it was in terms of business. And I was always really into, you know, learning about a new mindset and developing a new mindset. And I realized I couldn't bring any of the past mindset stuff I had with me to this new part of my life. So I had to change something. And then after, I, I, honestly, 2020 is probably my best year. 2021 has been incredible. Um, just in terms of, of personal development and everything like that. But 2020 was really pivotal in terms of turning 30, in terms of really finding my voice, finding the person I wanted to become for not just myself, but for my kids. I ended up having my daughter last year as well. So we, we do, you know, like I definitely found myself just in a new, a really new stage of life. And it's been, it's just been an amazing ride ever since. And that's where we are now. Antonella, I have to say, going through your Instagram pages, I absolutely love your content. So you have yourself as a money mindset coach, and I would love to know what does a money mindset coach do and why would somebody need a money mindset coach? So that's a really great question. Money mindset is one of these terms that not a lot of people know what it is because we just figure whatever mindset is mindset, but 
when you kind of break down the way people have an understanding around money, uh, most of us in the everyday world, everyday life have an understanding about money that, you know, you can only make a certain amount in your life. And unless you have these kind of qualifications and stuff like that, you can't really get higher or further than where you are. Um, so you kind of have to stay playing small and um, you have to kind of, you know, reserve yourself for just staying quiet. Just not really don't, don't do too much because you're not, you're not qualified to do so. So for some time, for some reason, we have this really odd conditioning around money and that it's, you know, it's only meant to go to people who were born with it, who have, um, you know, been inherited or maybe they've won the lottery or they just got lucky or something like that. And that's crap. Just to put it, to put it nicely, it's, it's absolute crap. Um, there are people everywhere who are dealing with a really negative money mindset in, in terms of things like, I can't because I didn't come from money. I can't because I don't have the education. I can't because whatever, you know, fill in the blank. And those kinds of mindsets hold people back from really understanding the capability they do have to make money. There is no one that's ever said to anyone, sorry, but because you live in a, you know, below income level, average income level community, you can't be the one to break through that. We've just accepted our societal conditioning and been like, you know what, this is where I'm comfortable. And if I make too many waves and someone's going to think something's up and it's like, we need more people to think something's up. We need more people to shake their head and say, you know what, I am meant for more because we're, we're all put here to live an amazing life. And honestly, whether people want to believe it or not, money does fuel that. So changing that mindset is important. That's pretty cool. Thank you so much, Antoinette. I found with um, a lot of people I know, and I've had this experience myself, that we're happy to give things away for free a lot. Like, and I feel like that comes back to self-worth. Is that what you found as well? A million percent. I think that um, when I see a lot of people giving away things for free, and especially the industry that I did come from, so the, the beauty industry, um, a lot of people were willing to build up their clientele by doing things for free. I never, ever did. I did one free thing and that was it. And um, because I believe everyone's time is money. No one's time is more valuable than anyone else's. You know, Jeff Bezos' time is not more valuable than our time and everyone is equal. Um, it's just about really, are you demanding that you are worthy of that compensation? And I think that's where people get skewed. That what, like you said, that worthiness is what really throws people off. So developing that understanding that you are worthy of it is the biggest mindset change. And is that part of what you do is work on women, men, people with their worthiness so that they can understand that, I guess, flick that switch? Yeah, especially women. I think especially women. I think we are, um, we have been conditioned the most to, you know, make it seem like we have to be okay with playing a little bit smaller and not saying that we are worthy of things, you know, as moms it's harder for us to try and balance all the things and then also ask for help at the same time and feel like we're worthy of asking for that help. But just like anyone else, yes, absolutely. You're all worthy of it and you're all worthy of the success and the financial success as well. So yes. I think that's interesting that you say that because I agree we've come across in various of our podcasts, we come across the same theme where women are so primed, I guess, or have been primed to put everybody else's needs and wants and requirements before their own. And so very often for a lot of women, that's their husbands and so, or their children. And so we often get these sort of, I can't start a business because I'm too busy with my children or I'm working in my husband's business or, um, I'm, I'm not capable of it. I've always been a stay at home mom. So I've got nothing to offer. Um, I imagine you come across the same things as well. What, what are your sort of top tips to women who are struggling with their money mindset or who'd like to start their own business um, who have been too scared to take that step um, or who are struggling once they've started? My first and easiest tip is, is probably going to be very vague, but it's just do it because there, you, there's no need to wait for permission from anyone to be successful or become the version of you you always wanted to become. I actually, um, I wrote a post on that today and it actually really, as I was writing it, it really resonated with me because what I included in that post was um, what would 
the little girl version of you say to the version of you today? If she saw you living the life that you were living now, is it, have you done the things that you told your younger self you would be doing now? right? And that your dreams are not that far off. There is no one that can silence those dreams. Yes, you can have kids. Yes, you can have a husband. Yes, you can have every, you know, left, right, and center hook thrown at you. But at the end of the day, all you have to do is have the belief and going back to Karen's point that you are worthy of it. And the only person that can tell you you're not is you. So take the step. I love, I love this because this has been my journey. And I was on the phone the other day with a mentor of mine and we were talking about who's that. We called it the badass Jess, but like the child Jess is what I'm thinking of. Cause yeah, when I was a child, I was gonna, I was gonna have everything. I was gonna, you know, like thinking back in Canada, I was going to have a cottage and on a lake and a jet ski and cottages aren't really a thing here, but you know, all these <laughs> things. And then I got older and I don't, there was never anything for me that like happened. Um, you know, like I, like my parents weren't well off, but we weren't, we weren't poor. Like money was always like, we never went hungry, you know what I mean? But like, I guess there was a bit of a scarcity. My parents are divorced and, you know, so as I got older and older, it was, I bartended and I knew I could just work more to make more money if I had to. But for me, there was always a thing with like, it, there's never enough. You, all, you always have to work more. You always have to do a little bit more. And what we were talking about with my mentor the other day was go back to that badass Jess, that little child Jess. And like, that's who you have to dream like, because you can have it. And I don't know where, where it happened in my adult life. And so many women that I speak to are the same. They're like, I don't, uh, yeah, I can. I, I do believe I can, but then, but then nothing happens after that. Mm. So is, th so like, I guess more of the scarcity mindset is mm -hmm. that, that feeling of it's, it's never enough. What, I guess, what are ways to help with, with that? Cause I feel for me, sometimes I like go and then I pull back. Something small mm -hmm. happens and I pull back and then go. It's your ego. Okay. You're scared of what someone else is going to say, right? There's, so what I've been finding a lot of, of what I've been working with my clients lately, they've been doing a lot of, um, kind of deeper, deeper looking into, right? So really kind of going deep down. And one of my clients had a profound breakthrough the other day. And I was, I was going through a, um, a very detailed timeline breakdown for her. So there's something in the coaching world called time techniques. And this is basically, you know, you establish a timeline, you try and figure out where the mishap happened that caused this person to start living this way. Um, and I went through the script with her once and she was kind of like, yeah, I feel it, but I'm not really sure. And this is around money mindset. Okay. And then all of a sudden um, I asked her again and halfway through the script, she's like, I got it. And she starts breaking down, just breaking down crying. And I was like, okay, what's up? She's like, it's a feeling of failing my mom. So what people don't realize is a lot of these underlying stories are things where as children, right, we want to appease our parents, right? We want to do well at the talent shows and have the best projects and the best report cards and all this kind of stuff. And then if you don't get that reassurance as a child, or if it's the, the line like, I'm not upset, I'm just disappointed. You know, that, that line that we've all heard once or twice. That line as a child is very definitive when it comes to being an adult because you feel there's you feel there's a fear of disappointing someone right so just to tie back to you really quickly when you said about bartending there's something from my mentor that I learned the other day that I was laughing at and I actually read right before I got on this call and I'll read it to you because I wrote it down it's why are you so special that you can't make money while everyone else can so ask yourself that question the next time you feel like I have to, you know, if, if I don't work, I can't make money. If I don't do this, I can't make money. So why are you so special that you're the only one that can't, but everybody else can? So just write, if you want to write that down, like I, yeah. I love it. And it's, it's just, just write down. that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a baby in one hand and a pen in the other. And I am trying to write it. <laughs> So, That's yeah, so, so good. It's just a yes, different it's, mindset. It's, That's awesome. It's so funny, right? But it just goes to show you. It's like, so like, how does that even make sense? So there you go. 
I love it. Thank you. A little bit of wisdom there. <laughs> um, I have a question. So I've been doing quite a bit of work on my money mindset over a long period of time, and and I have a current example where I'm I'm not currently employed. I've decided to put myself out there, and I said in my mind, okay, this is the minimum hourly wage as an example that I'm entitled to earn. Right now, I do have my online business on the side, which is kind of sitting there, but from a having the conversations with employers the world has changed at the moment too and I think possibly this has set some fear in people's minds or I need to accept something less than what they believe they're worthy of because I've found um, the conversations that I've had with employers they're like yes oh my god we love you blah blah when can you start and then we get to the money and they're like oh we can offer this which is less than what I can offer and I'm like well actually no this is what you know this is what I'm prepared to accept Oh no, thank you very much. And I and it's I and it's actually one of the employees said to me, it's not because I don't think you're worth that. It's because at the moment things are tough. This is our current climate, blah, blah, blah. So I'm putting a bit of a spanner in the works here because it is a complicated time for a lot of people. But you can have that mindset. Potentially the answer is, and I maybe I can see a vet's mind going to this as well, is it does, you don't necessarily need to hand your money making capability over to somebody else. Maybe that's an opportunity to step back into your own source of power and find another way as well. Absolutely. A million percent, right? So like I, I said this on my story the other day and it just randomly came across me because I had something pop up on my computer from a YouTube notification and it said, what to do when businesses are going through difficult times, how to make your business profitable. And I sat and I thought about it and I said to myself, how many millions of millionaires have been created during this pandemic, right? How many? Probably way too many for us to even, like we maybe the number we wouldn't even know, right? Like it's probably so far out there that we could say, oh, there's probably been about like 300,000. No, I'd, pro I'd probably keep even going up further than that because I know some people that have become millionaires during this time. I, I'm on track to make my first six figures, right? Ever in my life. So how is it possible that a climate like this is the deciding factor for most people. Companies, yes, they want to make money. They want to profit. We understand how that works. But what I said on my story was, you are in charge of your own economy. There is no one else in charge of that economy, only you. So the effort has to come from you to make the business grow. And that's just factual, right? We can sit and wish and, you know, cross our fingers and each of our toes and hope for the best. But at the same time, there is that actionable item that has to kind of, you have to run with. And yes, businesses might not want to pay out, but that is just, like you said, it's to step back into, then you know what, then that's, that's my sign that there is something more out there for me that I can create, right? So filling a void for someone else that needs your service is the best way to go about like really firing up your business. So it's something that um, made a real impact on how I run my business. I was something that I noticed you had said as well, and that is whoever you are to be successful in your business, show up as, as her right now. Mm -hmm. Instead of staying, you know, it doesn't matter what's happening for you right now. Who would you have to be to be successful in your business? Show up as her right now. And I know that's something that you coach as well. So when you are working with people, how do you get them to embody that for themselves? Sure. A couple of different ways. I am huge on visualization uh, because I know that we perceive in pictures. Most people perceive in pictures. So I will get people to actually picture themselves as the person they are going to be. If that doesn't work for whatever reason, and they're more of a uh, written, say someone who can perceive in words, which still you would translate into a picture, but some people it's just depending on your learning style, um, then I'll get them to write down a description. And then the final thing would be actually changing their physiology. So what does that future version of you look like? Is she, you know, if you're working, say in a corporate industry, are you a successful woman who walks in with a you know, a briefcase and a pencil black skirt and she walks in with like a blazer on and like hair in a bun, like, you know, what? and how does she walk? How does she walk? What does she wear? What does she drink in the morning? You know, does she get up early to work out? Does she have a green smoothie or does she have a coffee? What? So really embodying those personality traits and just telling them, start doing those little things now. I'm not saying to go out and buy a Lamborghini. 
what I'm saying is those baby steps of those embodiments of the personality traits is what changes you now. So it's impossible to try and get to a six or seven figure salary when you're operating on a five figure salary mindset. You have to start growing in your mind to be able to start growing in life because the mind just wants to please you. The subconscious mind only wants to please the, the owner of it. It's like a dog, right? It only wants to please. So if you give it a task, if it's, I'm going to be a, you know, multimillionaire, I'm going to make X amount by next year or whatever date, the subconscious mind is like, okay, here's the test. All right, let's do it. And you have to please it, right? So it's it's one of these things where embodying is the first step. So whether it's visualization, whether it's writing, whether it's actually standing in a pose that makes you feel like there's that Wonder Woman pose everyone talks about, standing in that pose, right? Like whatever it is, whatever works best for you is the absolute best way to get started. But doing something is better than doing nothing. Yeah, totally. For me, and I think it's probably the same for Yvette, it's music. You gotta listen to that music. Got to get into, like, just get into the zone and feel, f- feel who I want to feel like, if that makes any sense. And what I, I go, what I go back to is a couple songs actually from high school, because that's when I just, I don't know why I felt my most confident and I don't know where it went. Um, but that, that for me is what does it put on some of those high school jams. And then you're just like, boom, I just. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's exactly it. It's getting into that state is so, so important. So for me, important. it's 90s hip hop. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for me, it's jazz. To be honest, it sounds so lame. Like I'm a jazz lover and I'll be sitting here listening to Christmas jazz like all year round. And people are like, I'm like, I'm most inspired at this point. <laughs> I was Beethoven in a past life. Just leave me alone. I was a musical <laughs> composer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Um, I want to ask you, you kind of touched on it before and you said, um, failing your mom basically is kind of what you said, or like your parents, but I kind of want to touch on outshining other people. Do you get a lot of women that feel that way? I don't want to outshine, you know, I don't want to earn more than my husband. He's the breadwinner or, oh, my friends only kind of make this much money. Like, you know, who would my friends be if I was making more than that? Do you, do you get any people with that kind of million? Mindset? Yes. Yes. And that's, that's just one of, um, it's just another hurdle, right? It's just another one of these things that we've been made to believe. Like, who am I? I remember one of my clients actually asked me, she's like, well, who am I to make more money than the girl who's been doing it a year longer than me? And I was like, yeah, who the hell are you? That's awful. How dare you? How dare someone else make money that they're younger than someone else and they make more money than someone else because they've learned a skill that's made them grow faster. How dare you? And she just started laughing. And I was like, do you see how ridiculous it sounds? Right. So the point is in those, in those moments, it it is to kind of break that on state, even with yourself of when you're taking it really literally and you're saying like, well, who the hell am I? And then asking yourself just, yeah, oh, wait a minute. Who am I? Who do I think I am? You know what I mean? So like, I'll ask myself, I do it to myself. Sometimes I'll be like, who do I think I am? Oprah? Like, what do you think? Like what, what, what kind of, what kind of impact am I trying to make? What am I Oprah? And I'll say it out loud in my house and everyone will start laughing. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm actually being serious. Right. So, but yes. So people work through that all the time. There's that almost imposter syndrome of who do I think I am in making more money than, you know, my parents ever made, or than this person that can make or da da da. And it's just like, yeah, who are you? That's so, I love that you say, I love that you compare yourself to Oprah. You will be the next Oprah. I love it. <laughs> not compare yourself. Sorry. That, that's, that's not what you do. But like, I love it. I love how you, how you put that in there. Like who, who am I Oprah? Yeah, girl, you can be. That's so good. And I think that's one of the big things too. Like I will cheer someone else on before I'll cheer myself on. And it just made me think of it there when you were like, who am I? I think I'm, you know, what, who am I Oprah? And I was like, yeah, girl. But if I ever thought that to myself, I'd be like, Jessica, like you are so small compared to Oprah. Like what, you know, like that would be the mindset that goes through my head. How important is it for you and your clients to have a a circle of, of positive women? Well, very, I mean, that's just a very obvious answer. It's, it's very important because 
you know, the quote is you're a product of your environment. And, you know, the more people you have around you who are in that, um, in that kind of, you know, mindset or in that lifestyle or, or operating the way you want to operate or getting to a level you want to get to, you have to then start to raise up to that level. There are books, countless books that talk about this. Um, I know one that talks about it is definitely Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, one of my favorite books of all time. I've read it three times. Um, and he talks about surrounding yourself with mastermind, like a mastermind of people, right? Um, and it's all about how do you want to play, right? Like when you start looking at life as a game versus like this really serious, you know, we're all, look, we're all going to end up at the same place anyway. No one's making it out alive. So you might as well enjoy it while you're here and have fun with it. Even on days that don't seem like they're the absolute best, you can always make it, you can always change it and you can always, you're going to have another day to do it, you know? So it's just really about surrounding yourself with good people who want to see you win, people who are like-minded and are growing the way you want to grow or have gone past that point because then your energy has no choice but to lift and match that energy. I have a question around that. So yeah. one of the things that I've noticed is sometimes for myself, I actually don't like to be pushed. And I, my belief around money is that, you know, money is not the be all and end all. Money is just a byproduct of me living in my purpose. And if I do it well and I'm happy, then that's really, to me, way more important than having thousands or millions of dollars in the bank. Um, so how do you balance that out? Because I know, you know, money is a commodity and it's important, et cetera. But for me, I would... I find it more important to live in a space of joy and happiness anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So um, first of all, the way I personally view money is it's a tool. So what can I do with money, right? So it's not about, and I, I tell this to my clients all the time, you know, then they've said the same thing. Well, it's not the be all end all. Like it's not everything. It's like, no, because you're, when you're getting money, you're not looking at it and being like, oh, look, look at this big, lovely stack of paper. This is great. I want to just stare at it all day. No, it's what are you getting from it, right? What are you giving with it? What experiences are you able to provide your family or provide yourself or provide people who need it? So it's always about how does it expand? Not just how do we hoard it, leer at it and be like, oh, this is great. At least I have it, right? Because that's just a lack mindset all in itself. But it's about what can you do with it and how can you expand? And then I, I've said, what you said is perfect because so many people brought that up. It's like, well, like I would rather just live in a place of like pure bliss and like who cares about money? It's like, okay, then don't, then don't do it. Then don't make any money and then live in pure bliss, right? But the reality for us is, those two go together because the pure bliss might be like you guys live on the ocean, right? So pure bliss for you is maybe being on the beach on the ocean and, and that's pure bliss. But in order for you to live on the beach near the ocean, you would have to be making money to be able to afford the home you live in, right? So there's the, it all does tie together at the end, but bliss is a state. And whether you have money or you don't have money, you know, presently or a lot of it, it's, it's irrelevant because if you can't get into that state when you don't have a lot, you won't be able to get to that state when you do have a lot. So it's appreciating where you are there. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I do. I do a lot of gratitude practice around where I am as well. And I, I loved what you said earlier around creating that vision of where you want to be. Cause I feel like, I genuinely feel like that's my next step of where I want to be in that that's a big picture thing, right? It's not just the money that's coming in. It's actually where you're living and then the money is part of that. As like you said, it's a tool. So thank you. That's awesome. Very welcome. That's awesome. Following up uh, on what Karen said there about um, gratitude, I know something else that you speak about is gratitude for the money that you have mm -hmm. um, and gratitude for the ability and appreciation for the ability to buy any absolutely anything right now where you are. And I think for a lot of people, when they're living in a space of lack that's all they can think about the debt the lack there's no appreciation for the small things can you kind of go into why it's so important for you to have gratitude for the money that you have and, and the ability to buy anything practically absolutely. right now absolutely um really funny i, I did a, i posted a reel on that a couple hours ago about debt um, just to tie onto that, because that word just set off my my reticular activating system for what i literally just covered and it's like 
people wonder why they're in debt is because you're only focusing on that, right? So what you focus on expands, right? So if we're constantly focusing on the fact that we don't have enough, how do we ever have enough? And what is enough, right? $100,000 might be enough for one person, but $100,000 might be someone's mortgage. It all really depends, right? So it's all really all like, it all depends on what each individual values in terms of numbers. But the biggest thing that I definitely, and I love that you asked this because it is the biggest thing that's changed my life is literally being grateful for where you are and what you already have. Cause if you're not grateful with $5, you're not going to be grateful with 5 million. You're not going to be grateful with 500,000. If you don't give away, like people say, Oh, when I win the lottery, I'll give away $10,000 to a, you know, a charity in need. If you're not donating to charities now, you're not going to donate when you have 10,000 because you still are in the same mindset. Right? So I've donated at points where I've literally had nothing. Like I've maybe had a hundred dollars to my name. And I'm like, there's, there's someone who needs it. Like there's someone asking on the side of the road, or, you know, there's a child, like a, I'll get like, um, like we have sick kids hospital, just so no sick kids hospital here. Donate to them every month, like something, because it shows that even if maybe you're not at the pinnacle you want to be at, you don't have the mindset of there's not enough. It's knowing that's why it's called currency. It has to flow. Right. And it flows back to those who let it open and let it come through. But if you're always holding on to it, you can't let it come through. You restrict it. So good. So many good points. And it's what they say too, with like the people that win the lottery that have a bad mindset. And then you go and check on them five years ago and they're worse off than they were before. A lot of us look at it and you're like, how could you just blow a million dollars like that? I could do so many things with a million dollars. I would do this. I would do that. And it's like, but if you don't have a good mindset, with money or a good relationship with money before you're not going to have it now. And yeah, it's going to disappear. So crazy. And it, money, money only, um, just the last thing I want to add to that, because you did bring that up is money only amplifies the person you are. So if you were a not really good person before, you're only going to get magnified as a not really good person you are with money. So just think about that too. Yeah, that was definitely one of the things that's helped me the last couple of years because I did have a, I guess I still kind of do have a, have a money scarcity mindset. And that was one of the things because I was like, I'm not a bad person and I would do good things with the money. And I had to really shift my thinking around that because I know some people who they're not bad people, but maybe I, I guess I don't agree with how they spend their money and how they treat people because they have money. You know, I was a bartender. I've seen, I've seen lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've seen it all, Jess. I'm I've sure. seen it all. Um, but yeah. And I really had to think about like, I wouldn't do that with money. So I deserve to have it. And I really had to switch my thinking around that instead of being like, it's not gonna, I'm not going to be a bad person. I'm not going to go to a bar and, and abuse the bar staff if I have lots of money in that. So that was a really big, a really big shift for me. I, yeah. So I really like that one. Yeah. I think it's also just even just really quick with that deserving um, line you use. Um, I think we, we also need to, a really big thing we need to do is we, not, we need to let just people be who they are, right? There are, there are, look, there are not great people out there and they don't treat people well and whatever, but the, the cliche thing is like, it's their own karma right? It's like, cause you're not going to change. So like once someone hits 35, like, sorry to say it, you're not changing. You are now those, those patterns are embedded in you. And that is you, unless you really work to change. So if you saw someone, it's like, where, where you said like, well, they're a bad, I wouldn't do bad things with money, but it's like, they might not know that they're necessarily being a bad person. That just may be a personality trait. They can no longer let go of. Right. So, and that could be conditioning from parents or, you know, other situations, but just, yeah, in the deserving word, that was a, uh, but everyone is deserving. I think at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I like that. That's a, yeah, definitely should have definitely worded that better. I like that. You're awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. You worded it fine. Just, just for you to have a more like cognizance around the wording. Cause that that's incredible for you to know too. So if you ever get into it, cause deserving is almost lack, right? Yeah. Deserving would be, I don't have it. So if I don't presently have, then that means I'm lacking. Yep. Yeah. And now I'm back in that mindset. Just just a side note. You can so hear me. I love that. In no, no, no. I love it. I love it. Other people need to hear this. So good. You spoke just before we talked about this, about gratitude. You do gratitude every day. Is there any other one or two tips that you would recommend people do 
every single day to help their money mindset. Give back to other people and stop being scared, thinking that it's not going to come back to you. When you're in a drive through getting a coffee, buy the person's coffee behind you. Here now we have like underneath the windows, we have little, um, there's like little charity donations you can do and you can tap with your credit card at tap, give back. You know what I mean? Let someone in, in front. I don't care if it's as simple as let someone in in front of you that maybe, you know, is trying to get in front of you while you're driving, let someone in do something that is going to like help someone else's day. <laughs> Giving back is the first thing. Second thing I would say, the other tip I would say is another cliche thing, but really you can sit and say how grateful you are for things, but get up every day and start writing down how grateful you actually are. You know, you have, you know, when it's, you guys, I know we're going to be in summer now. Um, but for us, right. Like winter's coming, like it's about to get cold. How grateful am I to have a warm bed? I, I have lights on. I have running water, clean water. I have a fridge full of food. My children are healthy. Um, you know, when I get into the shower, the water hitting my skin is not, I'm not freezing. It's not scalding. I can choose a comfortable temperature. Like what are all these things that you have that you take for granted right now? Because you're so used to them. You're so used to having them. When you start appreciating, you can get grateful in one minute by looking at around in the room that you're in and looking around all the things that you're grateful for and just naming them out loud. And that'll raise your vibration around gratitude in literally a minute. So good. I love it. You've dropped so many bombs today. This has been, I know it's nighttime for you, but this has been an awesome way to start our day. <laughs> this is so good. Um, so for everyone listening, where is the best spot to find you? Do you have anything going at the moment that they need to know about? Sure. Um, so Instagram is probably my best spot right now. Um, I am actually rebuilding my account, not for, you know, no hacks or anything like that. I'm not a Kardashian whatsoever, but um, I am rebuilding my account because I wanted to be able to reach people more intentionally. That is a big thing I am about is intention. So rebuilding there, it's Antonetta Adele. So my name is not easily spelled. So if you guys want to write that in, that's up to you. Instagram there or my website as well. So www.antonettaadele.com. And um, yeah, right now there is, I do have a free ebook that you can find on my Instagram page. I'll be making a couple more because I have a lot to share and um, I'll be dropping some new courses very, very, very soon to help people with their money mindset in business. Thank you for listening in to this episode of The Transformation Project. The Transformation Project is not just a podcast. We're also a community. We're a collective of like-minded people all around the world seeking to live their best life and raise each other up. We're looking to support you, set goals, get healthier, connect with yourself and others at a deeper level, and better understand yourself and the world around you. We're always looking to link arms with like-minded people wanting to create more out of life. You can connect with us via our website, which is www.thetransformationproject.net.au. Email us at support at thetransformationproject.net.au or simply listen in to one of our podcast episodes, which can be found on all podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can even watch some of our episodes on our YouTube channel, simply called The Transformation Project. Please like and subscribe to make sure you hear all the incredible shows and guests we have lined up. If you have any feedback or any comment, we would love to hear those, as well as any ideas or guests that you think we should be interviewing in future. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Transformation Project.